Sup people, how is it going? So today I am going to go over some principles and philosophies of investing that I stick by and that I've learned from my own experience. Um, just want to preface this video saying that kind of justifying myself why they're good and not just bullshit. Um, I've been investing for about three years now and I've started to really get the hang of it over the past year and in the past two months I've made um, £10,000 so just to give myself a little bit of credibility I'm not, I'm not just started training I've been doing it for a while but these principles and philosophies are mainly for beginners um, because it, it kind of mitigates risk um, that is the risk isn't from a calculated risk it's risk from um, not understanding what you're doing so there's it kind of mitigates you you fucking up basically so the first one is the good old principle of don't invest in anything that you don't understand so um, for example so if you hear a good stock from like a friend or Reddit or a YouTube video that's saying the stock's going to go up loads and you look into it yourself and you don't really understand it. It's just my car making noises. And you don't really understand it yourself. So you don't know where the money, where, how the, how the company's going to make money. Uh, you don't really know the scenario. You just don't really understand it and you just go in it, go in to invest in it because purely someone else has recommended it to you or you think that it's a good stock and you don't really understand um you know the the scenario and the current kind of processes that affect the stock so i'll give you an example to make it a bit clearer one is one time that i fucked up and one is one time that i missed uh, a recommendation purposely because I didn't understand it and it turned out to be a win so first is um, this is time I fucked up basically I made a decent amount of money literally in the, like the first month of investing purely from fluke uh, this was in 2016 this was when the presidential elections um, went on and I kind of guessed that the US markets would do a similar thing to what the UK markets did um, for Brexit. So it plummeted, so I shorted it to plummet and then it went back up. So I bought stock really low and it went back up and I made like three grand, which is a lot of money when you're a student and I only put in like 200 quid, something crazy. So I made like a massive return just from fluke. Um, so this massive return, I didn't have any experience. It freaked me out a little bit. And I was like, okay, think of something that's stable, I'm not looking into it whatsoever. I was like, gold, right? I'm gonna put all this money into gold now. So I put all my money into gold, not understanding anything to do with it, the current climate and how like um, the current climate would affect it and do any basic research into it. And gold plummeted. And because I was using Trading 212, it sold my stock for me at a low price, so I couldn't even um, wait for it to go back up again. Uh, and that was a big lesson. Uh, also, don't use Trading 212, they're shite. Um, second, a big win is after learning this and realizing I didn't understand any anything to do with the stock that I just invested because it was it must have been like some sort of gold ETF that I invested in with um, Trading 212. It wasn't physical gold. Um, my friend recommended me this stock uh, called Sirius Minerals and apparently he had some sort of secret insider knowledge that everyone seemed to have at the time saying that the government was going to, you know, fund this to um, further increase their like profitability and they had like some sort of kind of mission that they wanted to complete by digging this new ground up and finding further minerals and further mining factories and, and apparently that was the inside knowledge that meant it was going to go up but I, I looked into it and I was I was like okay I don't really understand this I don't really um, see how they can make money from this I don't really know I just had a bad feeling about it and I was 
you know, like old me would have just been like, okay, it sounds good. I trust you. I'm going to put my money in. But me, I was like, I'm going to be a little bit skeptical. Um, I didn't really understand it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to stick to my principle and just not invest because there's plenty of other stocks to invest in. It would be an, a, a scarcity mindset if I was to look at this stock and think, oh, this is the only one really good opportunity right now. Turns out it was a shite opportunity. The stock plummeted. It went from 30 cents per share to three cents. Oh, sorry, 30 pence per share to three pence per share. So people lost a ton of money and I would have lost that as well. So luckily for me, I didn't. But the smart thing I did was when I invested, when I saw that go to three cents per share, I was like, okay, there's an opportunity because it's three cents per share and it's got a potential to at least be 30 pence per share because it's already done it. So I invested and it went up to about 15 pence per share after I invested. So I made a little bit of money that way after it already um, plummeted because I understood that better. I was like, that something I understand if a, sh if a stock is massively undervalued or there was something wrong with it, then uh, at that time, it doesn't mean it's not gonna go back up again. Um, so what actually happened was the government originally didn't give any funding, that's why it went down, but then there was rumors, uh, but then I bought when I was three and then it turned around and the government actually did invest in them, which is um, a change of events really dramatically. Okay, I'll stop rambling. Second principle, is kind of going on from the first is don't look don't invest in anything that you haven't looked into yourself so it's basically just reiterating that point it's like you look into the stocks yourself you understand them okay third principle is don't get greedy greedy don't get greedy okay it's very easy to get addicted to gains and it's very easy to get greedy within stocks so just try be wary of this um if a stock is massively in the green, it's um, unless it's something like crypto or um, or it's still way undervalued compared to its like 52 week high, then then try to just leave what you've got in it already and don't invest more. Invest in opportunities where it seems to be undervalued, where another stock that seems to be in the red. If something's in the green, it's probably more likely to go down into red um, instead of continuing to go up in the green. Like I see it as, um, yeah, the more green you have in a row, the more likely a red bit's gonna come up. So I, I, that means like green is growth and red is, pos and red is shrink. So you lose money if it's red. So if something's massively in the green, don't get greedy. Don't just say, okay, I'm gonna smash in loads more money into this stock, just leave it. Just leave it and see see how it goes and if it goes if it plummets again which it probably will because most stocks don't just constantly um <laughs> most stocks don't i just turned into a sith then most stocks don't just constantly go up without a little bit of plummet so buying the plummets and then watch it go green again fourth principle is to keep diversified so you got to try and keep a balance between low risk stocks and high risk stocks um depending on how you want to set out your portfolio and on the balancing side of things um you can balance it to be a high risk portfolio if that's what you want but you've got to realize it's high risk so uh or you can bal balance it to be a low risk and steady growth high risk high reward low risk steady growth so the things that i'd say are quite high risk right now in this current climate of actually April, may june the 6th today it is um virgin galactic stocks i'd say it's quite high risk but high return um it's quite undervalued right now um it's only 15 dollars per share i bought loads when it was 10 dollars per share um but i see that go it's already been up to 40 and it's come back down again because of covid but um i see that going up to like the hundreds uh, maybe 200 i might be being overly optimistic but if it doesn't get to 200 and gets to like 180 that's still it's gone up 10 times um gone up 10 times from where it is now at 15. um second other things that i think are quite high risk but high return are um like some cryptocurrencies like iota that's a banging banging one 
you should look into that if you haven't already. Um, Bitcoin, everyone knows about, but still, um, it's quite solid investment, I think. Um, XRP, high risk, high reward. So the things that are low risk, um, steady growth are, you know, your big companies like Apple, Amazon, Coca-Cola, things that um, are kind of pandemic proof for one. Um, things that are just, you, can, you can't really see them just like, tomorrow they're just going to be gone they're just going to be there for a long time like coca-cola when's that going to go like unless they find something extremely poisonous that kills people in coca-cola and there's a massive plummet in the stock even if that happens they'll just take that um that chemical out and um the stock will go back up again so and then you invest when it's low so that's kind of how you should see the stock market is always invest when it's low a fifth one which you got to remember um don't sell unless you're in green you're in the green so unless the total that you've put in is in the green so at the end of the day investing isn't that scary um you never if you're a beginner you got to understand this you never technically lose money unless you sell in the red you always just wait for it to go back up in the green if you're getting jittery about a stock don't sell when it's low um, and don't sell when it's gone down. It's always going to go back up unless um, you're really super fucking unlucky and it goes into liquidation or something. Um, but that is so rare, it's unbelievable. Um, so you just always wait for it to be in the green no matter how dire the situation looks. And if, if you sell in the red... Um, then you'll learn quickly that you just lost the money because you'll see you'll see like a week later when after you sell that it's gone back up to the green again like they always do so now moving on to philosophies so it's always better to invest with new fiat a uh, new like pump in more money than to swap stocks so you gotta think before selling a stock and swapping it. You gotta think: um, Does this still have more room to grow? Is it in the red? Um, is it better to wait until you have gathered more money separately to buy that stock? And that's usually the case. Um, if you wait to gather more money, because money like is a there's inflation. That means that the um, value of your money is going to be dropping anyway. So it's best to be in a stock. And B, you can always you can always make more money. Like you, you're getting to get paid again next month if you got a job. So um, you might as well just pop it into a stock. Um, like there's going to be money to come in again. If you keep swapping stocks, then you're never going to really grow. Um, like constantly grow. Uh, you, you're relying totally on you picking perfect stocks and timing the move correctly. The only time this rule doesn't apply is if you're a bit more advanced and know what you're doing a bit more and you've made, and you've and the stock that you've invested is, is massively in the green and you see a perfect opportunity of a stock that's in the red or like a really um, promising stock, um, then, you, then, yeah, then yeah, if you've already been successful with one stock, sell it and move it into another thing. But if it's not been massively successful and it's still like, you know, at one or two percent high or one or two percent low or even worse if it's ten percent low. Um don't do it. Just 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 inject more money into it rather than swapping stocks. Okay, so second, this is just like a general um advice for financial management um for investing. If you want to get serious in investing and slowly build up wealth rather than just be a one-off thing and forget about it, make a habit of investing a proportion of your salary each month into stocks. So I invest 20% of my salary into stocks each month and no, no excuses, I've got to do it. So first of all, if I, if I haven't found another tasty stock, I'll put that money into a stock that I've liked and has been uh, kind of I've still got a good feeling about the stock still think there's a lot more potential 
um, I'll pop it into that stock. Uh, I won't just find another random stock that I don't really know about and invest in that. But then again, if I have found a good stock that I want to invest in, that, that, that money's going straight into that stock. You get the gist. Or um, if the stock is too high to buy and I want to buy that stock and it's more than 20% of my salary, then I'd put it into, I've got a Hargreaves Lansdowne account, that's where I invest. I'd put it into the account and leave it there and not invest it until next month where hopefully my second round of 20% will mean that I'm able to buy at least one share of the company. So like some um, some companies like Tesla, that uh, $800 per share, um, it's, it's just a bit more than 20% of my um, income a month. So I've got to wait two months to buy one of those. Although I did buy them when they were 300 quid. COVID. Um, so third philosophy is have a third have a thirst for finding new stocks so finding new stocks would be quite enjoyable and things like if you so this is kind of my third and sixth philosophy kind of i'm going to join them into one so finding new stocks would be quite enjoyable if you like a company use a product a lot like i drink a lot of coca-cola and I invest in Coca-Cola because I, I like it and I want to change my status from consumer to um, owner or producer. I can't remember that term, what you become. Um, so I want to change the status to not be a consumer of that product anymore, even though I probably give Coca-Cola way more than I invest <laughs> just from buying. So I like Coca-Cola and so I'm like, oh, that's a cool, cool company. I'm going to invest in it. If you're a gamer, you can invest in Activision, Blizzard, um, you can invest in many like future gaming um, tech companies, technology companies. If you're into technology, there's there's bare like technology companies. If you're into food, you know food. Same for anything that you're interested in. Into any sport, um, there's always publicly um, traded traded um, stocks that you can invest in that is uh, can be within things that you're passionate about, and that's always good to invest in those. So find new stocks and there's a thirst for new stocks if you're um really passionate about like i'm i'm quite passionate about space travel right now um i'm waiting for spacex to become publicly traded fund but i'm not going to hold my breath because elon musk has now announced that um it's not going to be a public traded until they are profitable traveling from mars and back two miles and back but virgin galactic is one that is available to invest in so there you go. Fourth philosophy is if you like a company's ethics, invest in it. So whether that whether that's political, whether that's to do with environment, everyone's got their own opinions. It doesn't have to match anyone else's. But if you think that that company is doing something good that supports your cause on its ethical and the way it manufactures stuff, then invest in it and try to further that kind of. Um, choose those kind of stocks over ones that are unethical and this is how the market can dictate um what companies are successful and what aren't if we're just wanting to make a quick buck but something's really unethical um that's kind of selling your soul in a, in a way that brings me on to my my fifth and final philosophy that is if something is unethical unethical then don't invest in it um, well, it's just what I do. I think I'm in an abundance mindset and I'm always like, there's going to be other stocks that are just as good as this um, opportunity, but doesn't practice uh, on unethical ways of manufacturing or how they treat the workers, etc. So what I, so one thing that I don't invest in is um, personally, this is personal, you don't have to do this, but I do not invest in any Chinese Communist Party owned companies due to a the data um this the privacy i know apple and shit do that as well but at least they're, at least they're open about it um um the data from chinese Com communist party that they're trying to gather on citizens around the globe i don't really um buy i don't invest in apple and google of the likes as well because i because of the sense um the data 
collection that they do so i'm not into that i don't like it if they were to change the ways i'd probably invest also with the chinese communist party is the the work conditions that they allow in china with the slave shops and that, i don't invest in any company that has slave shops in um workshops in china like apple um and other any like alibaba and all that shite and uh, another one is huawei with the data problems that they've got with the spying on citizens not about that life so i don't invest in things that i see unethical you might disagree with me saying like um oh that's not that unethical there's other people that do the same thing in the us blah 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 true but that's just my opinion if you want to invest in them invest if you think something else is unethical and don't invest in them it's all entirely up to you like there's no one one way this is just a philosophy it's just a guideline this isn't to do with the principles the principles you should probably stick by but philosophies you can you know it's a philosophy it's not like rigid anyway that's it for today guys um if you like the video give it a thumbs up give it a subscribe if you've got any principles or philosophies comment in the box down below and keep me updated much love guys catch you later